Before we dive into the implementation details of how we can authenticate in a React app, let's go ahead and first understand that what exactly is JWT or also known as JSON Web Tokens Authentication. Let's consider an application where you have a login screen and I'm showing you a mobile phone or an iPhone, but it can be your web application running in the browser also. So we have our application probably in a browser running on some sort of a device and we have the server. You fill out all the information like your username and password and you perform a request that will be a post request in which you are going to send username and password to the server so the server can authenticate. The server is going to return back a response telling the client that, okay, you have been authenticated. The username and password you have supplied, it was correct. Now in the next screen, maybe you are trying to go to your accounts. You are fetching your accounts. Maybe these are bank accounts or a money market account, brokerage accounts. So you will again ask the server that, hey, can I go ahead and get my accounts? But how can the server tell if the request for the accounts is coming from an authenticated user? This means how can the server know that it's you? You have been authenticated. And this is where JWT or JSON Web Tokens comes into play. So let's go back to the login screen again and do the whole scenario again, this time using JWT. Your login screen, possibly your browser working in a mobile phone or a mobile app or an actual browser in your desktop machine, is going to perform a login request to the server. Once again, this login request will be a post request in which you are going to send the username and the password. The server is going to validate your username and password against the database. And the user, the server is going to return you a response. But this time, the response not only contains success true, meaning that your username and password is correct, but also some sort of a token this token is called a JSON Web Token. The server will be responsible for creating this token only if you have been authenticated successfully. That token is returned back to the client. In this case, this will be your application running on a mobile device, possibly in a Safari browser or the Chrome browser. But now it is the client's responsibility it is your application browser's responsibility to put this token somewhere safe so you can use it later on. One of those places in your browser is called local storage. So you can put your token which is returned from the server into the local storage. Local storage API is already available in JavaScript and you can easily with one line of code write something to the local storage which is going to be stored in browsers local storage and you can restart your browser or restart your machine and local storage contents will still be there. Now let's go back to our account screen. You are saying to the server that hey I need to get all of my accounts you're going to make a request to the account, which is a GET request, but this time in the headers, you are also going to be passing the token that you receive from the server. Whenever you're passing the token in your request, you always mark it bearer. Bearer simply means that this is a JWT token. It does not really have any real meaning as per se that if you don't use the word bearer, it's not going to work. It's still going to work, but in the industry standards, 
we have identified that whenever we are sending a token, especially the authorization token, we will use bearer, which basically means that you are, or this particular request, the client is a bearer of the token, separated by the actual token. Now you might be asking yourself, well, where do I get the token? Well, you get the token from local storage because you have already saved over there. Once you make a request to get all the accounts with passing your token in the headers, the server is going to validate the token. This means the server is going to make sure that the token is exactly the same as it was generated before. If you even change one single letter in the token, then the token is invalidated, meaning the server will say that, well, somebody has tampered with the token. For this case, let's assume that nobody has tampered with the token and you are sending the correct token to the server. Server validates the token. And then if it is validated successfully, the server is going to return you a response which will consist of all of your accounts. Let's go ahead and see a different example. Maybe you are on your profile screen and you wanted to update a profile. So you want to create a request to the server. You will create a request, a post request to update profile. And once again, you will pass in the token. So every request that requires server to check that requires authentication, you have to make sure that you're passing the token. In this case, we are trying to update our profile, which requires authentication. We can't really update our profile without being authenticated or else anyone can update anyone's profile. So whenever we are updating our profile, we are going to be passing the token again, the same exact token that we stored in the local storage. So for every single request that is a personalized request, that is a secure request, you have to make sure that you're passing the token. Once again, the server validates the token. If it is validated successfully, the server will be responsible for updating your profile. Maybe you updated your name or your email address and it will return you some sort of a response. The great thing about JWT or JSON Web Tokens, the whole procedure, is that once you learn this in JavaScript or React, it's identical if you are using an iOS native application, Flutter application, Android application, or any kind of application where the communication between the client and the server is based on JSON. So now that you know what exactly are all the different components of JSON Web Tokens, let's go ahead and get started.